All right, let's graph this one. Um, this one no longer is a fraction. So based on that slide that we saw, right, it should look something like this. Something like that, right? Now we do have to be careful on this one because in the exponent we've got x plus 3 now. So let's go ahead and make our table. Now there's always a particular value as an exponent that we kind of want to see. That value, and that is 0. We want the exponent to be 0 because anything to the power of 0 is 1. So what value of x would make this exponent 0? I mean, we could look at it like this, as like an equation, right? x plus 3 equals 0. What value of x makes that 0? Well, only when x is negative 3, right? So if I put x is negative 3 in here, we can evaluate that. So then I'd have 2 to the power of negative 3 plus 3, which is the same as 2 to the power of 0, which is 1. Okay. This is a pretty crucial value for us because based on what we saw on that first slide is the, the graph looks, I don't know, something like this here, right? <clears throat> um, since we added 3 to the exponent, though, <clears throat> Um, notice what's happened is, well, I guess, see on this one where the x was 0, then we had y is 1. But now we're looking at where x is negative 3, where the y is 1. So really, it's just that we've shifted this graph to the left 3 by having that plus 3 in the exponent, okay? So yeah, we do need to evaluate this. I'm just pointing this out on the video. We need to evaluate the exponent before we ever start reciprocating anything. Um, I mean, we could look at what this really means, but I'm afraid it would kind of... It tends to confuse people more than help, so... Uh, let's look at some other values. So I'm just going to spread out from negative 3. So I'll look at negative 4 and negative 5, negative 2, negative 1, and 0. And just see, see what we find from this. Uh, Hopefully it will be enough to just finish off this graph, right? Now for us, I'm going to plot this point, this negative 3, 1, right here. And now we can work on these other ones. So I'm going to go up in the table. So I'm going to look at 2 to the power of negative 4 plus 3, which would be 2 to the power of negative 1. And it since it's a negative exponent, we would reciprocate that and get one half. Yeah, so that's what I meant. So you yeah. do have to do that. That's very good, yeah. Okay. Uh, the reason why we need to see this is because, again, the way this is behaving is that we should get a graph that looks, sorry, something like this, right? <clears throat> if we can find out the point that it's going, I guess, down from this zero where the exponent is zero, stuff. See, it, it's getting very close to that axis, but it's never actually crossing. Now, that's a pretty crucial idea there because based on what we know about these exponentials right now, it should just get closer to that. So in other words, if I wanted to graph this point negative 4 and 1 half right here, I really don't need any more points on that side of that negative 3, 1 stuff. Because this line should never cross that x-axis. Now, eventually it will, just in this particular problem it doesn't, okay? So we can manipulate these functions so that if they do, just right now they're not, okay? Um, and we can, we can kind of confirm this with this x is negative 5 stuff. So that'd be 2 to the power of negative 5 plus 3 which is 2 to the power of negative 2, which would be 1 fourth. So yeah, we can see right there that those numbers, those y values, as x gets more and more negative, they're get, the y values are getting smaller and smaller. So they should get very close to 0, but never cross it. Let's go in the other direction. So that would be 2 to the power of negative 2 plus 3. So that's the same as 2 to the power of 1, which is 2. So that'd be negative 2, 2. It's a pretty easy point to graph. 
What about 2 to the power of negative 1 plus 3? That's the same as 2 to the power of 2, which is 4. So when x is negative 1, we get y is 4. And then finally, 2 to the power of 0 plus 3, plus 3. It's the same as 2 to the power of 3, which is 8. And then we'll have this point. So again, just based on what we know about the behavior of these exponential graphs, we should be able to graph to the right of that point now something like this. So yeah, when x is 1, we get y is 16. That doesn't fit on the graph. So if you started at 0 for the x, you would have noticed, hopefully, very soon, that the farther to the right you go from there, you won't be able to fit those points on the graph. So you're going to have to go to the left if you want, if you want the points to fit on the graph. Now, it doesn't mean those points don't exist. It just means that in terms of graphing, it would be very difficult to graph those, right? Because then we'd have 116, which would be somewhere up in this area.